Hello, I'm here again with another video for you. Uh, I want to answer some questions about the drama essay this time, uh, give some advice. Um, first, I just want to say a couple of things about the schedule. So, as I said in my email, Monday is our last class, um, and I will have a kind of final assignment for you to do on Monday. But I'll be accepting everything, including this last essay, up until Tuesday uh, the 12th. Um, because that's the last day of the semester. So anything that you're missing, just try to get it in by then and we can work things out. Um, I would tell you guys, don't worry too much about your grades right now. Um, they probably look lower than they are. And at the end of the semester, I'm, you know, I'm going to make things reasonable. Um, so yeah, just do your best to get anything in. Uh, send me any questions that you have about this or about any of the other assignments that you're trying to finish up. Um, and let's get into the uh, questions that I have for today. The first question about the drama essay that was submitted on Canvas says here, what suggestion can you give in looking for sources for the first topic? I feel like I can justify my claims using the place quotes, but finding outside sources is a bit more challenging. Um, yeah, definitely. So doing research, always tough. Um, first of all, my first answer to this would be the two essays that I gave you to read with the play, uh, Orientalism by Edward Said, and um, that other one by Doreen Kondo, uh, M, M Butterfly, uh, Essentialism, Orientalism, whatever the title is. Uh, those two that I gave you to read though, I think that those are great essays um, that very much connect to the play. And I think any essay on the play could include those. Other than that, I think you could look for any kind of psychology or sociology essay um, about stereotypes and how they function in society or where they come from, or the consequences that they have, all those kind of things. It's the same thing we've talked about before, where you want to look for research about like the topic that you're looking in, in the story. So if you're looking at stereotypes in the story, you can find an outside essay that's just about stereotypes. Also, I would say um, you can look on the databases. I know there are a few and other places, um, but you can find any other essays about M. Butterfly, any other author writing about the play and you can see you know if you agree with them or disagree with them or use them as uh something to back up your point or as a contrast to go against and try to correct them um but yeah you can also look for other people writing about m butterfly i think those are like the three main things the essays that i gave you things about the topic itself and the uh, essays about the play let's keep moving now to our next question uh this question reads the only thing that has been difficult for me is keeping up with the topic I'm writing about and just finding enough stuff to write about. I always think I have enough things to talk about and put in my writing, but it's tough to stay on track. Okay, I, I think that this is something that, that a lot of people um, deal with. I think that, you know, when you're trying to make a thesis, you'll say, okay, well, you know, I'll talk about stereotypes in the play, but then you write like a page or something. And you're like, well, well, that's, you know, kind of all I had. Uh, and obviously staying on topic is hard. So I think the big thing for this question would be making an outline, would be having a really clear idea, first of all, having writing out what your thesis is, or, or at least like some bullet points or some, you know, it needs to be a full sentence or whatever, but some kind of idea of here's what the main idea is. And then you would want to get, here's uh, one paragraph that I'm going to have, and maybe a quote that you know that's going to go in that paragraph, and how that paragraph goes back to the thesis. And then you just want to kind of go through and see how many paragraphs you really have. And I think this is obviously going to help us organize our ideas and kind of break it down into um, the main idea that's the thesis of the, of the paper. And then kind of all the smaller ideas that help you to uh, convince the audience of that argument or the pieces of evidence that you have to back that up. So I think making an outline is something really crucial. I think it helps you to expand your points and have more to talk about. Because when you know that one of your paragraphs is going to be the only place you talk about a certain point, it kind of forces you to say just as much as you can, just anything that you can um, about that idea. Because you know that that paragraph is the one place where you really want to get it all out there. Um, and it forces you to hold back your next main, uh, the next point that you want to make, because that's going to be the next paragraph. So you're not going to get into that now, you're going to save it for next. So I think by having, having a plan and having an outline like this, you can expand the points that you want to make. And also it keeps you more on track because you should be able to see more clearly how each of these paragraphs goes back to your thesis um, and, and uh, you know, advances your argument. So my advice for this person would be to, to make an outline and try to, try to get some of your ideas down on the page. 
um, you know, bullet point format or whatever, just so that you can look back at them and say, okay, am I sticking to that point? Does this point, uh, you know, connect back to the thesis in the way that I want it to? And uh, yeah, I think that would be helpful. So give it a shot. This next question is a little longer um, and a little bit personal. And I, I do want to thank this person for sending this question in uh, because I think it touches on some stuff that uh, a lot of us are, are dealing with. Uh, so this one says, something that has been difficult for me, to be quite honest, is getting started. I've fallen so far behind and I'm just feeling anxious that I won't be able to finish in time to fail the course. I'm trying to cover all the material, but it's proven difficult to get through while at the same time attempting to cover in all my other classes as well. I never thought I would fall so far behind because I actually do enjoy writing. It's harder with this online format. I typically ask quite a few questions in class because I tend to overthink and need to clarify in the material. And I've just been getting so overwhelmed trying to figure it all out. Um, so yeah, again, um, I really appreciate this question. Um, I think it's, it's, you know, very realistic of what a lot of us are going through. Um, so first of all, in, in terms of being worried about failing the class, um, I, I really wouldn't be worried about failing, uh, at least this class. As, as long as you've handed in like one of the essays, one of the small writing assignments, you know, some of the, uh, homeworks. I wouldn't worry about failing. I, that, that's not going to be the issue. Um, it's more, you know, where are we going to be in between there? Can we get that A that we want? Or are we going to be more to the B or something like that? Um, so I, I would say in terms of the work for the course, focus on the essays. Those, those are the ones that are going to be the biggest part of your grade. After that, the small writing assignments. Um, after that, uh, some of the homeworks. But, um, you know, as long as you have like a decent amount of stuff handed in, and it's clear to me that you've, you know, been trying your best and that, you know, you, you are paying attention and picking things up as we go. The grade, you know, it's, it's going to work itself out and we, we can talk more about it as well. Maybe I'll, I'll send it on an email um, asking all of you if you have any questions about your grade uh, for Monday's class. That's when I usually talk about the grades on the last day of class with people. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about, about failing. Just focus on, you know, doing your best and getting some stuff in. In terms of getting started, um, with this essay, um, you know, I would always encourage people to start with the thesis um, to get there. You might want to look back at the drama essay assignment sheet that I have posted on Canvas. Um, and hopefully some of those questions can lead you to a thesis. Once you get a thesis, um, you know, with your main argument, then you can kind of go through and start looking for some quotes. Um, for me, when I'm really stuck and I, can't get I couldn't get started on an essay, that's kind of what I would do. Have your main idea and then just start copying and pasting quotes in there. And even if you're not sure totally how it all goes together, you're at, once you have some quotes in there, you know, you start seeing how you want to analyze each quote and how it's going to go back to your argument. And then from there, you can kind of, you know, build up paragraph by paragraph just by starting with these quotes. Um, so I think that's something that's really helpful, uh, can be really helpful. Um, in terms of the online class, I really would encourage more people to, to send me questions on email and, you know, on the email more than I've ever been. Uh, so I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can, but definitely send me some questions. It could be about something very specific with the play. It could be about um, something in one of my videos or my notes that I've been leaving uh, that you've been confused by, or, or, you know, you just want to make sure your thesis is going in the right direction, or, or my uh, if my comments on your draft were confusing, make sure you check those out, by the way, the comments uh, that I put on your rough drafts. Um, so yeah, get in touch, reach out. But yeah, my biggest message here would be that, you know, there's still time, like I said, it's, you know, until Tuesday. Um, but, you know, this is all stuff that's doable, stuff that, that, that we can get done. Um, you know, if, if you handed an essay that's a little bit short, if you have, you know, one less source that I asked for, um, it'll, it'll be okay. It'll be okay, you know. Um, so, you know, just do your best. Try to get some of this stuff in and uh, we'll work it out. Moving on here, question number four. This one reads, I'm doing the first suggested topic with my essay and I'm not too sure how else I can expand on that topic. Can you help me with ideas on how I can expand on that topic? Um, yes, I think I can. Uh, so this is a good question. Expanding our ideas is always tough. Uh, one of the biggest challenges really for getting used to, to writing in college versus other writing is, you know, being able to really uh, expand your ideas and extend them and write longer papers and stuff like this. Okay, so in terms of this first topic, I have, I have three things that, that I would look at here. Uh, with this topic, it's about stereotypes. The first one, according to play, why are the stereotypes bad? What are the consequences of believing in the stereotypes? 
So the key to expanding on these ideas is that you got to be really specific. What are the exact ways that the play shows that stereotypes are bad? What are the specific consequences that the play shows that stereotypes will have? Um, some examples here, you know, one consequence is the way that shows kind of the psychological effects that Gallimar goes through. Uh, I'm thinking in the beginning when he kind of has the insecurity of not fitting into the masculine stereotype. Um, kind of the, the, I don't know, like manic or strange experience of when he starts feeling that he is fitting into the stereotype and he starts being, you know, like abusive almost. Uh, he talks a lot about power and he's kind of intentionally making Butterfly uh, or Song uh, feel bad. Um, so I think that's one of the psychological effects of, of not fitting in, or even when you do fit in, of, of really just of the stereotypes. Another specific one that comes to mind for me is how the stereotypes were used to justify war uh, when he uses the kind of stereotypical impressions of the East to give advice about going to war in Vietnam. That's a big one that sticks out. Um, and another one is the way that it shows us stereotypes to be, you know, kind of dehumanizing how it... Uh, causes them to treat people worse or not treat people as individuals or, or make these kind of generalizations that be harmful. Um, so that's the first one. Why are they bad? What are the consequences? And be as specific as you can. That's really important. Um, another thing I would look at that the play, I think, has to do with stereotypes. According to the play, where do stereotypes come from? Um, I think it's another another thing that the play is interested in. Uh, I think, you know, obviously, Madame Butterfly, the old uh, opera by Puccini, it's a big place where the stereotypes come from since he's seeing his life in terms of this old opera, in terms of Madame Butterfly. Um, there's also things like the magazines and Act One, uh, or even the role of Mark in the play that kind of reinforce these stereotypes. So again, being really specific, uh, where does stereotypes come from according to the play? Another way to kind of expand this idea of looking at stereotypes. Um, and then maybe one last question that I have, this one I don't really have as, you know, directive an answer for it, maybe a little bit more complicated. Uh, I think the play is interested in, like, how can uh, stereotypes be countered? How can they be combated? How can we try to undo stereotypes or mitigate some of their power? And I think this is really the whole strategy that Song has uh, of inversion, of, like, inverting the stereotypes of, of uh, you know, even though he's Asian, of being the, you know, the cad womanizer who's lying to Gallimard and using him and taking advantage uh, of Gallimard turning into Butterfly. That's something about turning these things upside down and inverting them, I don't know, like explodes the stereotype, shows us that uh, it was always false or that the world never really fits into these things. I don't know, something like that. Uh, but I think that's another thing the play's interested in. How can we uh, go against these stereotypes? And we have our last question. Says, I am having trouble starting the essay. The play is kind of hard to read and hard to understand. I want to pick option one for the suggested topics, but I'm lost in how to start the essay, how to organize the essay. Okay. Um, yes, I agree. The play can be a little bit confusing, but I think that's, you know, also why it's kind of a fun play. I hope you guys think it's at least a little fun. Um, so if you're confused about anything in terms of the plot of the play, of, you know, what's happening, who's doing what, when are things happening, uh, please reach out, please send me an email. I think we can figure that out pretty easily together. Um, in terms of getting started, so this is, you know, I, I know this is a question I've kind of dealt with, but start just with your thesis. Try to answer the question, what is the place trying to show us about stereotypes? Um, I think it's clear the way that we've been tracing it and the way I did in my other videos. The play is really interested in stereotypes, right? Um, they keep on coming up, it keeps on using them. Uh, they play a big role in, in Gallimard's whole thing, right? So the question then would become, well, what are they trying to show us about these stereotypes? If it's so interested in it, like, what's the point? What point is it trying to make about stereotypes? So your answer to that question is going to give you your thesis, right? The play is trying to show us that stereotypes, you finish the sentence, you know, the, yes, like they are bad. I think that's maybe a place where we get stuck is, okay, it shows us stereotypes are bad. And then you try to write an essay based on that. It's not specific enough, right? Uh, just saying that they're bad doesn't give you enough of a direction to go forward. So I would stress again that we need to say in what specific ways does the play show us that stereotypes are bad? What are these specific consequences that you could have to deal with? Um, how, what, like, what, what ways are they specifically harmful? So I think if you do that, it'll give you more of a direction going forward, and then your ideas will kind of fall in place. But I would start um, with that thesis. Once you get that thesis, like I was just saying, 
Um, I think finding quotes can be a good way to kind of build up from there. And then uh, maybe once you have some quotes, you start seeing your ideas coming together, then you get maybe a better outline where you have, you know, paragraph one will be about this, paragraph two will be about this. And then once you get your main ideas in the line, you see they relate to the thesis, you know, you're kind of off and rolling. And uh, I think things will get a lot easier from there. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I have for today. Uh, do your best with these, get in touch, ask me some questions. Remember all the things that we've said in the past about introductions, conclusions, paragraphs, using quotes, explaining quotes, connecting back to the thesis. Um, make sure you're thinking about all of this. Um, and thanks for listening. Listening. I'll see you soon.